My name is Nyoriana Maiko. I'm the Chief Information Officer of the Port of Long Beach, but I'm also a computer scientist by training. A few decades ago, I'm older than you, I remember working with some of the early AI people. I have a general question. I agree with you. This is one of the most significant innovations to happen. One of the things I've struggled with over the last 20 years in thinking about this, we're about to change the nature of work. This is that significant. And I feel that people are not talking about it. There will be a significant, there'll be a transition time period where a significant population in the world and in this country will not have had the types of discussion and understand that we have. So they can, like you mentioned, society needs to be a part of it. There's a large portion of society that's not even in this discussion. So the nature of work will change. It used to be that things that were just um, going to be automated. There will be a time where people who define themselves by work since thousands of years will not have that. And we're hurtling towards it. What can we do to make sure that we take that into account? Because when we talk about society, it's not like they're all together ready to discuss this. Some of the effects of some of the technologies that we brought into the world have actually made people separate from each other. How do we get some of those, not regulations, but how do we come up with some of those frameworks and voluntarily bring things about that will actually result in a better world that doesn't leave everybody else behind? Thank you. Thank you. I, I'll give you my perspective. I, I think I completely agree with you that it's one of, it's the ultimate technology that could really increase inequality and make, make things so much worse for us as human beings and civilization. Or it could be, you know, really amazing and it could bring along a lot of creativity and productivity and enhance us. And, you know, maybe a lot of people don't want to work. Um, eight hours or a hundred hours a week. Maybe they want to work four hours a day and do a bunch of other things. And, you know, um, I, I think it's certainly going to lead to a lot of disruption in the workforce. And we don't know exactly the scale of that um, or, or the trajectory along the way, but that's, that's for sure. And one of the things that um, I, in retrospect, it's not that we specifically planned it, but in retrospect, I'm happy about, is that with the release of ChatGPT, we sort of brought AI into the, um, you know, collective consciousness, and people are kind of paying attention because they're not reading about it in the press. Um, people are not just telling them about it, but they can play with it, they can interact with it, and get the sense for the capabilities. And so I think it's actually really important to bring these technologies into the world and make them as widely accessible as possible. Um, you know, Sam mentioned earlier, like we're working really hard to make these models cheaper and faster so they're accessible very broadly. But I think that's key for people themselves to actually interact with the technology and experience it. Um, and sort of visualize how it might change their way of life, their way of being, and participate uh, as, you know, uh, as, as in providing uh, product feedback, but also, you know, institutions need to actually prepare for these changes in the workforce and economy. Sam, I'll give you the last word. Yes, something. absolutely. I, I think it's a super important question. Um, every technological revolution affects the job market. Uh, and over human history, you know, every maybe 100 years, you can feel different numbers for this, 150 years, half the kind of jobs go away, totally change, whatever. Um, I'm not afraid of that at all. In fact, I think that's good. I think that's the way of progress. And we'll find new and better jobs. The thing that I think we do need to confront as a society is the speed at which this is going to happen. It seems like over, you know, two, maximum three, probably two generations, we can adapt, society can adapt to almost any amount of, of job market change. But a lot of people like their jobs or they dislike change. And going to someone and saying, hey, the future will be better, I promise you, and society's gonna win, but you're gonna lose here, that, that doesn't work. That's not, a, that's not cool. Like, that's, that's, not a nice, that's not an easy message to get across. And al although I tremendously believe that we're not gonna run out of things to do, people that wanna work less, fine, they'll be able to work less, but you know, probably many people here don't need to keep working, and, and we all do. Like, we, we, there's like great satisfaction in expressing yourselves in, in being useful and sort of contributing back to society. That's not going away. Uh, that, that is such an innate human desire. Like evolution doesn't work that fast. Uh, 
also the sort of ability to creatively express yourself and to sort of leave something, to, to, to add something back to the trajectory of the species is, that, that's, that's like a wonderful part of the human experience. So we're gonna keep finding things to do and the people in the future will probably think some of the things We'll, we'll think some of the things those people do are very silly and not real work in a way that like a f hunter gatherer probably wouldn't think this is real work either. You know, we're just trying to like entertain ourselves with some silly status game. That's fine with me. That's how it goes. Um, the, but we are going to have to really do something about this transition. It is not enough to just give people a universal basic income. People need to have agency, the ability to influence this, they need, we need to sort of jointly be architects of the future. 